Hello, this is Aiden and welcome to Confab. Um, today I'm going to be making a video to process my feelings about the phonology of my language. Um, I'm having a lot of issues with the phonology. It's been a big struggle because I feel like I'm sort of caught between competing goals for the language. Because on one hand, I do want this to be a language that I can pronounce and pronunciation and audio comprehension is something that I've always had a huge issue with because I have fairly severe ADHD and um, I have problems processing auditory information, even in English sometimes. Um, and that's one of the major issues I had with Japanese when I was trying to learn Japanese is Japanese has a very, um, very small, comparatively small phonological inventory when compared to English um, and a fairly restricted or very restricted um, consonant vowel um, possibly nasal syllable structure. And so a lot of the Japanese words, even after studying for two and a half years, they would blend together um, for me. And it was difficult, especially with there being so many homophones, to process what was going on. Um, and the mora difference between like shu and shu, um, things like that, like I, I just struggled so much with processing it um, and also recreating it. And I mean, there were other issues I had like learning the Japanese language. Um, that I uh, sort of realized as I was going through the process of trying to learn it. Um, but that was one of the big ones, and that was something that I was very cognizant of um, going into this project. Like, I don't want to have several different sounds that all sound super similar and are used a lot, um, because I feel like um, it just doesn't make sense for me to make a language that I'm... Or, I feel like I should be making a language with the intention of being able to understand and process it. However, at the same time, I recognize that I'm pretty much going to be the only one speaking this. I'm definitely going to be the only one speaking this because it's a personal language and I don't really have any intention of like uh, teaching necessarily. I mean, I could make a video series for that, but um, I don't necessarily feel the pressing need to um, the way some people definitely want other people to learn their language. Um, and also like I'm designing this fundamentally for like ritual purposes. And the idea of how I would use it in ritual purposes is more um, with respect to chanting. Um, I, I intend to speak the words with the intentionality, um, and I'll probably speak them more slowly um, than I do um, speak in English, um, because I want to put a lot of thought into the words I'm saying and the meaning behind them. I want to speak in a meditative way. So I'm looking through the IPA. Um, and looking for the sounds that we have in English as well as I want to incorporate sounds that we don't have in English. Um, but a lot of the sounds, even the ones that I'm familiar, more familiar with, they sound extremely similar. Like pretty much all of the like uvular and velar fricatives, um, I, I've never been able to really pronounce them. Um, my, uh, my Jewish friend who knows some Hebrew has tried to teach me um, how to work with those sounds, but I've always struggled with them. Um, so I, in distinguishing between them um, and then producing them at all. But I I think that like it's such a common sound cross linguistically and it's something that I'm sure I could do if I, if I used it with that intention and could incorporate that way as long as I didn't pick multiple sounds from that region or multiple like, similar sounding um, consonants from uh, that section of the um, IPA that I could probably work with it. Um, and then there's also a couple sounds, the um, alveolar uh, lateral fricative, voiced and unvoiced, um, that I, I like the sound of a lot, um, but I struggle to pronounce them um, seriously. I've been trying like over and over again. Um, sha, 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 sha. If you have any tips, I would love to hear them. Um, but that's something I'm working on. And I had this idea. I've always struggled with the um, like with writing photo tactics because um, photo tactics. When I read other people's, they're like um, they're like mathematical formulas. They're they're so lengthy and they're so like logic based. Um, and this idea of patterns because um, I feel like a lot of people go into ling go into conlanging as linguists, like the linguists first who become conlangers, and I am not a linguist, I'm a writer slash artist slash student. Um, and so learning, simultaneously trying to learn conlanging, trying to learn languages, and trying to learn linguistics 
it's tricky. So photo tactics is something that I've been slower picking up. Um, but I even have, I had this idea with the the uh, uh, voice and unvoiced alveolar fricatives, the shaw sound that I can't really pronounce yet. Um, I did I did think of this thing um, where if I have the um, the l um, like law sound, um, the something tap palatal tap alveolar. I don't remember. Um, I should have looked that up before I pressed record. Um, I, I use that a lot. And I also had this thought of pluralizing um, through pre-nasalization of consonants, which is, I think, that is something they do in Igbo, like ngo um, or mbo, um, where you have, like, you put, like, a nasalized, like, an n or a m sound before a word. Um, that's not a, a way of pluralizing, but that's um, something that they do with their phonotactics, which I've always loved so much. Um, and I was thinking of doing that. Um, as a um, as the way to pluralize, um, and I was thinking, and this this is I, I'm still not sure if this is how phonotactics work, but it just sort of made sense with my tongue when I was doing it. Uh, but to have like words that start with the uh, L, the L uh, tap sound like la, and to pre-nasalize them la, and then I was thinking that maybe with, when I nasalize those sounds, those um, L sounds, to turn it into the alveolar fricative like la or la la. Shaw. I don't know um, if that makes sense, but uh, I really liked the idea, um, and so that's sort of like my baby steps uh, with those um, with that particular sound. Um, I also sort of discovered implosives, um, which I never really understood until I discovered a particular YouTube channel um, that just explained them, like, explains them, and explains all the IPA sounds in a very um, easy to understand way, which I will link y'all to. Um, but um, like ba 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 da. Ga, ba, da, ga. Um, I, I didn't do, do it as well as I did, um, but there are sounds that I think are distinct enough from the ba, da, ga sounds um, that I can definitely like make the distinction very clearly, and um, the way I produce them feels interesting, um, and we don't have, I don't think we have those sounds in English as far as I know, um, so it's definitely something I have to be like, put a lot of thought into when I make them. Um, so it sort of fits like all of my different things. So I want to incorporate those more. Um, I also wanted to do ejectives, um, but I just I, I just had so many issues producing them and also under processing them. Like I like I like hearing them like on their own, like when people are doing those explanation videos about how to pronounce adjectives and things. Um, but when I hear like sample text of languages that uses adjectives, or when I'm tasked with distinguishing between um, adjectives and non adjectives, um, the same issue I have with aspirated and non aspirated. Um, consonants. It's just very hard to distinguish right now. Um, so I think that for this language, I don't really want to use those distinctions, but I think in the future, it's something I definitely want to play with more. And the aspiration thing, especially because now I'm learning Irish um, on Duolingo, slowly, 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 but surely, um, and aspiration is a big thing there. So hopefully once I learn more of the Irish language and once I'm exposed to um, more of it through immersion, um, which I'm really excited about, I'll be able to make those distinctions more clearly. Um, fingers crossed. <laughs> Um, and I'm looking forward to that a lot. Um, and also, click consonants. It's something that um, I know a lot of people are fascinated by, myself included. And I kind of want to include those. Um, but I want to study more languages that have click consonants and sort of see how they work and how they're incorporated into the languages in different ways um, before making any definite decisions. I know if I do want to have click consonants, I want to utilize them heavily. Um, and same, th same thing with a lot of my um, more... Uh, uh, not form, but like less common cross linguistically sounds. Um, I want to uh, utilize them more heavily, kind of like the way the th th sounds in uh, English um, are everywhere in our language, or at least in my dialect of it. Um, I saw, I heard someone say once that uh, that sounds that a language has that are uncommon cross linguistically tend to be used more heavily in the language because they're more difficult to produce, so a speaker has to be used to producing them all the time uh, for it to sort of remain uh, prominent in the language, um, if it's that common. So I kind of want to incorporate that. So like my implosives and my, um, my those fricative sounds, um, the alve alveolar lateral fricatives, um, I want to really sprinkle those through liberally throughout the languages. And I may or may not do the same thing with click consonants. Okay, um, I think that that's pretty much all I have. Um, right now, but I look forward to making more videos and updating y'all later as I continue to develop it. Thanks. Bye.